as we've talked about this morning and we've seen throughout this, uh, the week, there's, there are a large number of groups, um, people, organizations working together. And I'm going to uh, invite the, the, the first uh, panelists, uh, Dick, George, and, and John, uh, representing, um, I don't know how many, two mainly, but uh, a number of organizations that are kind of interrelated um, working in this space, especially in the sp standards area. Uh, specifically SGIP and um, IEEE, to have a, a little bit of dialogue about what's, what's going on uh, in those specific areas and specifically the collaboration that's happening between them. So if I can ask George um, to, to kick off and uh, some comments about uh, SGIP and how, you've been, uh, how uh, you're working with um, IEEE and P2030. Sure, thank you. Uh, thank you, Anto. Um, so um, just to pick up the, the theme that I um, started with a, a few minutes ago on, on collaboration, um, you know, when we look at the sort of framework in the U.S. for what we're doing on the standards, uh, going back to uh, the ESA uh, Act, uh, it um, uh, was a, I think it's a great you know, piece of legislation. And in the, in the standards, it made it very clear that the role that uh, NIST was being given was to coordinate the uh, development of, of the standards framework working with uh, the private sector and um, you know, government agencies at uh, federal, state, you know, all levels. And uh, it actually uh, named a few of the organizations that NIST was expected to collaborate with, and uh, um, uh, IEEE is, is one of them. Uh, there, there are others uh, named in there. But the structure that you know, we've set up with the SGIP is intended to foster this uh, sort of collaborative uh, work uh, public-private partnership to, uh, um, uh, to create the standards. And uh, SGIP's role was to provide the um, coordination, sort of an overarching um, you know, framework, and then look to the uh, standards development organizations to create the specifications that are, that are needed. So, um, so you kind of imagine at the top, you have this sort of high-level you know, vision, and then you know, going down to the bottom, you've got all these detailed technical specifications that uh, relate to specific uh, things. Uh, now, there, there's something in the middle that's that's needed, which are um, let me say more you know detailed you know architectures and and uh, 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 again the you know the SGIP is not in the business of um, writing standards documents that would be very inefficient. So we we certainly look to uh, the many uh, SDOs uh, uh, to do that. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, just a year ago, I think it was around June 2nd, uh, uh, you know, Dick invited me to uh, kick off uh, the uh, um, IEEE's P2030 uh, effort. And, um, you know, at that uh, kickoff, uh, you know, I made the observation that through the work that had been done on this to date, um, there were, uh, you know, a large number of gaps that, that needed to be filled and that, uh, uh, you know, IEEE really had a you know, great role to play in, in filling uh, 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 you know a number of uh, a number of gaps, and uh, clearly you know the, the gaps were in in things like uh, you know standards for interconnecting uh, distributed uh, you know storage uh, into the grid, uh, into uh, communications, uh, uh, you know IT and, and so forth. And so I I really you know applaud uh, 2030 for you know having you know picked up that that charge to kind of you know, develop within the IEEE sphere sort of the next layer. Uh, that sort of fits between the sort of very high level, uh, you know, architecture and the, the very detailed, uh, you know, specs that are uh, coming out on, on specific uh, elements. Wonderful. And Dick, if I can. Thank you. Uh, thanks, George. I couldn't couldn't have said it better. <laughs> so, but uh, I'm gl glad to be here. I think. Uh, about two years ago, when ESA was passed, uh, or two and a half years ago. The IEEE Standards Association, of which I'm a member of the, the board and, it's, and the Board of Governors, uh, requested that I be the liaison to the NIST activity due to my DOE connections research side. And uh, as a member of the board, I participated in the earlier meetings and uh, as a liaison and reported back to the board. And the, every time I reported back, they said, what can we do, what can we do? And I kept saying, we just need to wait, we need to wait. And uh, finally, I said, well, let's try a project, a guide, and uh, 2030 it evolved out of the, the thought process of the leadership of the Standards Association. 
And within this, you know, the IEEE, there's over 380,000 members, and the Standards Association is part of the bigger picture. And uh, we uh, are trying to represent multicultures within the IEEE. The IEEE basically has 44 societies, of which uh, under 2030, we pull together the communications, the computer society, and the power and energy societies together into task forces to do 2030. So uh, I see ourselves as, uh, I, I don't want to use military terms, as foot soldiers trying to do uh, NIST work. I didn't say God's work, George. <laughs> but, but the idea is for us to, to, to make it happen. And so we're looking at the interfaces that are transparent to the technologies, which has upset some of you, and I, I understand why. But at the systems level, we're at the, that second phase that George mentioned, and we're trying to do that with 2030, to develop an umbrella for a body of standards that drops down into the application side and the use guide side, which is user guide side, which is being developed by uh, a lot of the SGIP uh, committees. And one last thing is, uh, what have we done? Well, there are many committees within IEEE, not just 2030, and they're actually working on standards to revise them or to try to update them. Uh, in one case is IEEE 1547, which is addressing the PAP 7 request, and that uh, will be done through 1547.8. There'll be a meeting in August in uh, San Francisco to uh, kick that off. So we're taking PAP 7, we're gonna make it .8 under 1547. 2030 is now moving forward, and we're very comfortable. Uh, we've been doing this for about a year since George came to our meeting here at uh, Intel in Santa Clara. And we've come together, and this is the first meeting where we have a draft 2.1 that basically puts us all on the same, same page, which is exciting to me because up until now, uh, we've been all discussing things in a uh, dispersed manner. Now we put it together. And it's very exciting, and I'm very optimistic, and I hope whatever we do will be helpful. And being here at Connectivity Week, just quickly, uh, uh, it's been good. Um, our uh, Task Force One Energy Group actually visited one of the Dukes. Uh, I, I, these terms are all over the, uh, mean a lot to you, but to me, it's, uh, there are too many of them. I, f I forget what they mean, but I know that uh, the earlier, uh, committees that were put together for TND in, in particular um, uh, were, were visited by the S, uh, Task Force 2030 yesterday to collaborate. So that's good, and hopefully that'll happen in the future. So, thank you. So John, you're, uh, you're, the, you represent, you're here representing the industry, and yet you also have significant involvement in both the I, the IEEE and SGIP, so maybe you can build a bridge and sort of explain how the, this all comes together. Thanks, Anto. Uh, just uh, with respect to the IEEE Standards Association that Dick just talked about, I'm, I'm also on the Board of Governors of the IEEE Standards Association and, uh, you know, chairing the governing board of, of the NIST SGIP work. So kind of a bridge between the two. I want to I wanna say with respect to um, the work, any standards work that we do, Collaboration, which is the theme, one of, you know the big theme for this morning, is is very critical, and um, it's become more critical as the industry has changed. You know, um, if we look at, um, well, I've, I've been involved with the Power and Energy Society, so the 44 societies in IEEE, the one that I'm more most active in is the PES. Um, the industry has changed in many respects much faster. You know then we've been able to restructure our own societies. So as an example, we have 17 technical committees in the PES, and um, technology has, has advanced to the point where, on paper, realistically, some of our technical committees should probably join forces and work together because devices today, we don't have separate protection, separate electronics, like an RTU, and separate communications. You know, we're, we're all in one. Right, we have one integrated device we call an intelligent electronic device. But yet, um, the structure of a lot of our, our technical committees still maintain individual technical committees, one for communications, one for protection, one for substation automation. So, it, you know, to get things done from a standards point of view, collaboration is very important. And what, what we've been doing for um, many years is if 
if the, the leadership really has to say, you know, the work that we need to do, we need input. Maybe we're, our home is a substation committee, but we need input from communications and we need input from protection. And for years now, for decades, we've been um, jointly or co-locating the meetings with the other groups. So as an example, in 1991, in the substations committee, we reached out to the relay committee. And, and once a year then, from then on, we, we co-located our meetings together so that the work we were doing in substations, we needed the input from the protection folks, we met together. So I really applaud what Anto has done this week, you know, with, with Connectivity Week, because one way, I mean, the, the best way to me to foster collaboration is to have the co-locate and have the groups meeting together, and hopefully then that, that, that causes the uh, cross-fertilization, you know, that we really need for standards. So, you know, the question is, how do you, how do you collaborate? I, I, it really doesn't work in forcing it top-down. <clears throat> You know, the leadership of NIST or the leadership of, of 2030, you have to do this. Um, <clears throat> what we really want to do is have, create the environment. The leadership should create the environment, such as co-location, so that, um, you know, it, where we really want the collaboration is at the working level, right? The, the, the PAPs, the DUGs, the, uh, uh, the, the testing and certification committee, the architecture committee, the cybersecurity working group. Have 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 the the different parties that that um, have input to provide from the different stakeholder groups in the same location. To me, that's that's the best way to do it. And and events like this this week are are the ones that really foster that. And so, from a leadership point of view, it's not a mandate situation for collaboration. For for me, it's it's co-location, creating the environment, you know, and letting the the, the working the technical folks then. They get together, the, the collaboration will then occur. Do you want to continue there? Um, okay, so, um, you know, one, uh, uh, Jesse Burst, who, who sometimes, you know, um, yeah. uh, moderates uh, panels like this, um, um, has, has sometimes asked me what I, what I want to do when I retire someday. <laughs> yes. And uh, my answer to that is I'm, I'm going to go back to school and study psychology. <laughs> Uh, because uh, having, having been in the standards business a long time, it's been uh, interesting to observe what happens to people when you put them uh, to work in organizations uh, where they have, you know, let's say they, they work for, you know, Lawrence Berkeley Labs, but they're also involved in, in a standards group. And uh, I've observed a very interesting thing, that, that people tend to develop an affinity with the organization that they become part of. And they, um, uh, which is good, right? Um, but to to a point, um, because you know, if if that affinity, you know, clouds your view of what's the uh, end result that you're trying to accomplish, you spend more energy trying to figure out, um, you know, how do you um, uh, sort of protect your your lair? <laughs> and uh, this is uh, this is an issue that uh, I think uh, we too often get wrapped up in when we have many organizations that have to work together. And uh, so I think the only way for us to deal with that is to really encourage um, everyone to uh, keep our eye on the end goal. What's the end result that we, that we need to get? And um, uh, just be you know, pragmatic in figuring out how do we get the right experts you know, together yeah. to produce that end result. And I, I think we kind of have to take off our Organizational hats and and really keep uh, keep our eye on the on the objective that we're we're trying to reach. So, Dick, do you get any insight when you think about what you're going to do when you retire? <laughs> I'm beyond that, <laughs> but uh, I think George hit the nail on the head with psychology. There really is a psychology you deal with, and and, and all that we do as scientists and engineers. Um, uh, I um, if I were to go back to school, I'd probably just, not that I want to, but I'd probably become a lawyer. I mean, uh, this an, ele an electrical engineering. I should have gone to law school before I, or by vice versa, or whatever. And I think medical students should go to electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, to learn about what they're doing today. It's just gotten so complicated, and and really exciting. But I'd like to get back to the answer. Uh, I think it's innovation. Um, we're dealing with a culture that's uh, multifaceted, and that's the problem I had in forming 2030. 
it's, it's coming together, but with a computer technology, communications technology, and power and engineering energy technologies, as John said, within the PES, bringing the uh, t and groups with the relay protection people was really uh, a very helpful thing within that society. But can you imagine 44 societies that are thinking differently and, and actually have been trained in some cases differently? Uh, they're not all electrical engineers. We got computer scientists, biologists, uh, people that are dealing with various applications. And in the case of 2030, uh, trying to get the 802 guys to talk to the um, the power relay and protection guys versus the, um, uh, God knows, the power line communic. I'm learning all this, power line communications and wet wireless. It is amazing, uh, the complexity of what we're trying to do. But the simplicity of it all is, is that, uh, as John said, we need to work together. We need to collaborate. And we're doing that, and it's becoming a paradigm within IEEE. Uh, there is, and John and George didn't mention it, but out of our 2030 SA, there's and our power engineering to some degree and leadership are formed of a, a, an, over, an umbrella over the IEEE for all of the societies. Fairness, even-handedness, representation. This is really where we're coming from. We have 44 societies that all want to be part of Smart Grid, and they all say they are Smart Grid. This is amazing. This is a paradigm shift, and we're, we're having to deal with that. And uh, I think 2030 is probably you know, in the middle of this right now, but I think in the future you're going to see more of this, and out of the SGIP, you will see this uh, this growth within the other SDOs, uh, not just IEEE. So uh, psychologically, um, it's a it's a it's a challenge, and the culture and, and the people that are involved, uh, very strong-minded, very intelligent, and and, and to some degree uh, uh, dogmatic, and therefore you have to deal with that accordingly and. Leadership, as John said, is critical. Um, and uh, I would encourage all of you to take on leadership roles because I'm, I'm 70. I'm not going to be around anymore. I think the key is <laughs> you're going to need <laughs> either that or I'll drop dead trying to do this. But the deal is we need leaders who can get up there and do what George said, understand and be even and fair-handed. And uh, that's really what's important. And, uh, I think uh, leadership is lacking, and I see a lot of it needed. So, uh, so John, maybe I can ask you in, in closing this uh, this brief panel, uh, maybe a, a, a call to action or some suggestions to the many people out there that are SGIP members and IEEE members. How, what are they supposed to take out of this, and how should they behave? What, they got, what should they do differently tomorrow? Okay. Um, first of all, I agree with George about what you said about psychology. And I, I took two psychology courses in college. So I don't know if that was a, looking at a crystal ball. And, um, but I, I really believe that uh, with respect to leadership, I think what's, what's um, first of all, let me back up. First of all, I think it's getting involved. So I, I, uh, I, you talk to a lot of folks, whether it's um, an IEEE or, or, or the SGIP or just in general, a lot of, a lot of everyone has definite opinions and comments on what should be done with Smart Grid. But um, to me, until you get involved, um, your input is, cannot influence what's going on. And we, you know, this is a very special time for us because all of us can influence the future direction of the industry. This is a, it's a very evolutionary and embryonic field that we can all put our stamp on. So to me, the one takeaway is first and foremost is get involved. You know, don't don't sit back and and uh, watch or monitor or see what others are doing, but get involved yourself. Uh, secondly, I think with respect to leadership, um, it's it's a very difficult balance in um, especially when we're when we collaborate in joint co-locating meetings, is that the leadership uh, has an agenda for what needs to be done with any of these PAPS or do meetings, but what we want to do is we want to make sure we encourage, you know, those that attend to provide input. Okay, and so it's very, very easy for us, for, for the leaders to have, we, we have our own opinions, obviously, and, and an agenda, but what we want to do is hold those back, right? We want to encourage, we want to be a good listener and encourage the input from all of those and really collect the, the different points of view. Um, 
And as George said, I, and I think this is important, is take the hat off from the organization that you're from and really look at more of the big picture. So I think one is uh, participate. Second is, is leaders really foster the interaction of the group. And then the balance here is be a good listener, but at some point then um, the group needs to converge you know, on what the consensus is going forward. And then and, and, and the group then, even, even if it's not something that uh, you've expressed, once the group decides what the direction to go, then the group gets behind it. So I think it's a combination of two things. One is getting involved. And secondly is uh, the leadership be good listeners. And um, first, and then eventually drive to a consensus, you know, and, and move forward. Great. Thank you. Thank you, the, the three of you. Um, I think it's been a great panel. Thanks.